This is Home Value Stories. I'm Jamie Owen. Home ownership and marriage often go hand in hand. There are a lot of similarities between the two. In this special episode, I sit down with my lovely wife, Heather, and we discuss some of these similarities. So ease back in your favorite comfy chair and join us for a little chat about love, life, and well, home ownership. We hope you enjoy it. Well, today I have a special guest with me. In fact, it's the first guest of the show. And it happens to be my lovely wife, Heather. Hi, thanks for having me. Hey, I'm glad you could be on the show. And uh, thank you very much for coming up with this idea of 10 reasons owning a home is like being married. Uh, you can definitely attest to that. In fact, uh, a lot of these were your brainchild, I would say. What do you think? Yeah, I feel like I'm being set up a little bit there. Don't... If it doesn't go over well, you have somebody to blame. Awkward. <laughs> All right. No, no, it's going to be great. So we'll, we're just going to go through these and we'll have a little fun with them. And hey, we'll just see how this thing goes. So the first section we have is there's the honeymoon phase. And that's definitely the case when you buy a new home. Like you, you just love the home. And we've owned a couple of homes that are older, but just anticipating fixing them up and um, imagining what things will be like as you know our family grows that's pretty exciting yeah and you seem to have an energy then where you don't mind staying up till midnight painting and getting things done and that energy definitely wears off so you got to take advantage of that honeymoon phase when you have a new home and get things done and make it the way you want it because it only lasts so long. <laughs> That's true. But then once you get those things done, then it's just a nice, comfortable place to live. Kind of cozy. You get it the way you want it. Yeah. Marriage is like that too. When we were first married, things were exciting, you know, learning about each other and doing stuff together. Yeah, you're adjusting to new roles, new schedules. And... I mean, we dated from long distance. You were in Colorado. I was in Ohio. So there's definitely things you're still learning about each other once you get married. I mean, I learned fairly quickly that I haven't had to fold laundry in 23 years because I didn't do it good enough. So after about two months of catching you refolding the laundry, I stopped folding it. Yeah, it's it's a problem. It's a problem I have with myself. I don't mind at all. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm a little OCD. It works for me. <laughs> <laughs> but so, so we we learn about those things about each other, and now we're in a comfortable mm -hmm. place. Yeah, yeah full of my own laundry. It's a great arrangement. <laughs> <laughs> if only our kids had that problem. Yeah, we got to work on that. <laughs> but it's a good place to be. That's right. That leads us to number two. You don't always look your best. That is true with home ownership. It's pretty tough to keep a home looking perfect. Although we have friends that do. I don't know how they do it, really. I don't either. It's like, man. It's mentally exhausting to try to keep perfection all the time. Totally. Not really realistic for most people, at least not us. No. When I was single, maybe. Because if you put something someplace, there was nobody to move it. But once there's more than two people in a house. Forget about it. Yeah. I totally agree. I remember when I was single, I was so OCD. Like I couldn't go to sleep if my socks were laying, ne laying next to the bed. But uh, that's pretty much gone away. But that, you were the only one to put them there then. Right. So right. now there's four human beings and three animals in this house. And. I can't worry about the rest of them. Nope. You'll go crazy or you'll never sleep. True. And 
Just got to do the best you can. Yep. That's it. Yeah, a dog, a cat, and a bird. That's a lot. But th- they aren't the biggest culprits, are they? No, it's the two boys. <laughs> they, you know, sometimes... Well, the other day, we open, we were having, getting ready for dinner, and there was no forks in the drawer. Well, the dishwasher only had three forks in it. So where are all the forks? I threw a fit and made them go in their bedrooms. Magically, all the forks appear. Hmm. That's disgusting. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I just thought they were melting them down to make jewelry or something. I don't know. No, just kidding. (laughs) Teenage boys. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Yeah. They say you never want your kids to leave home, but I can see the benefits. (laughs) Oh. I'll miss them, but the house will definitely be cleaner. Oh, yeah. For sure. (laughs) So that's kind of like marriage, too. You know, we don't always look our best. We don't roll out of bed and, well, I'll just speak for myself. I know. <laughs> Man. Definitely. Not bus. you, me. Oh, oh, no, I was talking about me. <laughs> but you can't roll out of bed looking perfect. And uh, that's just that's just the way life is. And it's, it's kind of funny talking about personal appearance. Like every time I go to pick up some takeout and I'm like in my old jogging pants and t-shirt, what do I always tell you? You're going to run in, you run into somebody, you know. Yep. And then I, I, I always do. I always do. So I don't know why I do it. Because I always tell you, oh, just go. You're not going to see anybody, you know. Every time. <laughs> you still fall for it. I went to pick up bagels the other day and ran into my dentist. I'm like, oh. <laughs> but you man. changed before you went, didn't you? Uh, no. Oh. <laughs> anyway. He's just a dentist. He sees the inside of your mouth. What's well, he care? <laughs> I don't know. He's a nice guy. I've got a personal pride. <laughs> what if he's listening to this podcast? Anyway, yeah. all right, so that's, that's number two. All right, that moves us to number three, the smells. When you mentioned the smells on this list, I immediately thought of bad smells. I don't know if it's because I'm a guy or just because... There's plenty of bad smells. Yeah. But let's talk about the good smells first. Start off with something positive. So I love the smell of like home baked cookies. That's a good one. Oh yeah. They it, say it sells houses. They do, and I believe them. Fresh baked bread. Oh yeah. But I'm not gonna let it manipulate my opinion of value. But <laughs> beyond that, yes. Um, the smell of a burning wood on a crackling fire—that's pretty awesome. That's good. Even burning leaves outside. Ooh, that is pretty awesome. Or freshly cut grass. Yeah, it's a sign of spring. Oh, yeah. Even the fresh air in the springtime is just something about it. Especially after a thunderstorm. That nitrogen smell. Mm Mm-hmm. There's a name for that. I don't know what it is, but yeah. I just call it nitrogen. Well, we'll go with that. The nitrogen (laughs) smell. (laughs) All right. So let's talk about some, some bad smells without getting too gross. One I mentioned in this article was that earthy smell. My office is in the basement, and since I used to do some mold remediation, if I smell something earthy, I immediately think toxic mold. And probably I'm a little over the top. Yeah, you're sensitive to that. Yeah, like I'll 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 I'll, I'll start forgetting things, and then I'll and then I'll I don't know. I'll get a little dizzy. My eyesight not quite right, and I start blaming it on the toxic mold. And then what do you have to remind me? Um, you are in the second half of your 40s, and that's just life now. Man, that's brutal. But true. <laughs> so it's, it's not the toxic mold? We don't have toxic mold. Oh, good. I think you've tested the house multiple times. Yeah. But if I smell the earthy smell again, I'll test it again. Just I remember one time you almost killed our cat because you smelled cat pee under your desk. Oh, Yeah. And I came down and I sniffed the whole office. And then I got to under your desk and I'm like, yeah, it smells like pee under your desk. But our cat has never, ever peed in the house. No. And then we realized that it was your socks because you'd stepped in cat pee in one of your clients' homes. Yeah, that's right. And you you literally almost killed that cat. Yeah, I have low tolerance for cat some dogs making messes in the house you had to throw away your shoes yep 
And I remember that house too, because I went to the house and I always offered to take my shoes off if the house looks like it's, you know, really clean. Otherwise I've got booties I'll put over my shoes. But this house looked really clean, a beautiful home. And I'm walking through, you know, without my shoes on. And then I, I asked the homeowner if I could go into the basement because I need to inspect the basement. And she's like, sure, go ahead. But you know, the, that's the cat's area. And I really didn't think much of it. She wasn't kidding. She was not kidding. I mean, there was cat hair, like, matted to the carpet in the basement. And I didn't really smell a, a lot bad, but I obviously stepped in cat urine. And then I put my shoes on. And yeah. hope no one from PETA listens to this. Oh, <laughs> Ivy. <laughs> it was bad. But yeah, I forgot about that. And speaking of animal smells, so cho uh, our chocolate lab whiskey... You know, she's a good dog, too. She rarely makes a, a mistake in the house. Oh, almost never. She's four, and it's been years and years. But one thing, though, have you noticed that if the cat or the dog do make the, the occasional mess, it's always on our area rugs, even though most of our first floor is hardwood? Oh, yeah. It's like, it's like they're on? just drawn to them. Yeah. It's like, what, do they got to stand on something comfortable before they make a mess? <laughs> anyway. But, and uh, I, I have to say, not to... Uh, harp on our boys again but there is no smell like a teenage boy that's true i i blame it on the sweaty feet but maybe there's more to it than that mm, yeah there's a lot of things that go into that but yeah we donned the respirator going into their room and we try to keep it clean but it's like man there is something about teenage boy smell all right we better get off the smell subject that's i'm, I'm getting grossed out yeah All right, that leads us to, to number four. It always costs more than you think. And that is true with home ownership. It just seems like what you plan expense-wise always ends up being more. Like like I had that illustration in the article. You know, you replace the you go to replace the faucet and you end up with a whole new bathroom. Yep. Things just keep morphing into a bigger project. We've probably done that. Yep, I would say so. That's what I recommend as a professional appraiser. Well, I guess if I'm an appraiser, I should be a professional. A 30 to 50%. Just add that to anything you're going to do to your home. Just to be safe. And if, if it doesn't end up being that much more, eh, it's a bonus. All right, so that's how homeownership is. What about marriage? Just life, I guess. Life's expensive. Always more expensive than you think. Yeah. You go to buy a car, it's always more than you think. Yep. I mean, I think owning a home, at least, at least your payment doesn't change. Well, that's true. It's not like your payment goes up, well, unless your taxes go up. But children are expensive. True. And it just changes. It goes yeah. from diapers to, you know, other expenses, you know, sports or other things, video games, all that stuff. Food. Oh, yeah. That's a big one, especially with two boys. I don't know about girls because we don't have girls, but holy moly, our food bill's ridiculous. They like to eat. I do remember when they they moved out of diapers, though, and I did feel like we just got a raise because... Man, it's, it was hundreds of dollars a month just for diapers. Yeah, kids go through phases. They get a little yeah. cheaper for a while. Then they get more expensive. And then they're in college. Yeah. <laughs> it's a vicious cycle. Yeah. <laughs> and then, of course, they'll be gone. But then our expenses are going to change, you know, to like continued colonoscopies, blood pressure meds, orthotics, glasses. Yep. Did I miss anything? I'm sure there's more we don't even know about yet. Yeah. Yeah, we're just just discovering these things. Mid-40s. Not old, but like at the top of the roller coaster and you're just kind of looking down. No, that's depressing. <laughs> All right. Moving on to number five. So number five is sometimes you just don't feel like doing it. So when it comes to home ownership, that is true. I mean, there's always things to do. In the summertime, you got to 
you know, mow the lawn and there's always outside things to do. And then that just shifts to stuff on the inside that has to get done. Um, painting and, you know, you put it off so long, but sometimes you just gotta, gotta do it. So it always feels good. Like when I'm done mowing the lawn, it always feels good. It always looks good, but you know, sometimes you just have to push through. Anything you can think of with home, home ownership? Oh, there's always, like you said, there's always something. You clean it and 24 hours later, it's dirty. Yeah. Messed up. Yep. It's perpetual. That's cool. It's just part of life. Yep. But always something. So what about marriage? Don't feel like doing it. Should, should I tackle the big elephant in, in the room? Massages. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Don't! Man, that's just brutal. But you're right. Yeah, I my, I do feel like I've got the worst hands in the world. Like when I go to the chiropractor and then, you know, I'll get a massage. I, I, I'm just amazed by these m- massage therapists that they can just do this all day long. Like my hands cramp up like like a, a worthless T-Rex fingers. I just, it's, just can't, uh, I don't do good with that. So that's why you started buying gift certificates. You know it. I feel like it's working out, really. Mm-mm. What do you think? I'm not complaining. But but sometimes you just have to muscle through. Sometimes you just can't get to the masseuse, so I do the best I can. But that goes with anything. You know, sometimes, you know, one of us may want to go out to eat and the other one doesn't or do some shopping and but yeah. You know, we do it anyway because we, we just want to be together. All right. Anything to add to that one? I'm good. Oh, good, good. All right, moving on. (laughs) Well, should we take a break? Oh, wait. Is that your way of saying you have to go to the bathroom? No, no. A break to talk about the sponsors. Don't you ever listen to the podcast? Oh, oops. (sighs) Sure. We'll be right back. Home Value Stories is sponsored by Find My Appraiser. FindMyAppraiser.com is a network of trusted, knowledgeable local appraisers dedicated to delivering accurate, quality valuations for your home or business. If you're looking for an excellent appraiser in your area, go to FindMyAppraiser.com. They have the best appraisers. Home Value Stories is also sponsored by ConsumerHomeValue.com your go-to resource for trusted consumer information about all things real estate. Are you buying, selling, moving, considering remodeling, or more? Go to ConsumerHomeValue.com for reliable answers to your real estate questions. So that leads us to our sixth point. It takes regular maintenance to last. And uh, that is so true with home ownership. There's just always things you have to maintain. And if you skip those things, it almost always leads to bigger repairs down the road. That's with anything, cars, whatever the case may be. I had the illustration there of just cleaning the gutters and they're If you let them get clogged up and then the water drains in the basement, well, you end up with toxic mold. And then you start forgetting stuff. It's bad, I can tell you from experience. No, just kidding. I can see that weighs heavy on your mind. Yeah. What are we talking about again? No, just kidding. So yeah, in fact, even when I'm appraising a home, if there is some dampness in the basement, the very first thing I look for is to see if the gutters are clogged. And I would say, probably eight out of 10 times. That's the reason for the moisture in the basement is clogged gutters. Such a simple fix instead of spending, you know, $10,000 waterproofing your basement. So, but you've got to keep up with those little things or, or it adds to bigger things. So, and that, that's true with marriage too. Wouldn't you say? Very much so. So, Got to have a little regular date night, get out, have some fun. 
So we just had that uh, nice trip to New York, to the Finger Lakes region. Yes, it was very nice. Pretty cool. Can't do that every week. No. But a nice getaway. And we stayed at the Mirbu Inn, Inn and Spa. And that, that was a pretty awesome place. It was very nice, yes. Very quiet, very quaint. Yep. Just what we needed. Yeah. Quiet is good. Any place you can wear a bathrobe to the dining room is a great place. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Though a little strange. Very admittedly. strange, yes. It's like To see grown men in the dining room in bathrobes was a new experience. Yeah, some things you just can't unsee, really. Well, but no, I mean everyone's. Coming. We didn't get a peek of anything. No, but no, it was, just... it was definitely a new experience. For sure, but I would definitely go back. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So if you want to check out a nice link, I've got that on my article that I wrote on this topic at ClevelandAppraisalBlog.com. So check it out. But it doesn't always have to be like uh, going to some fancy place like that. Just a good date night. What's your favorite date night? Um, I would say something that's quiet enough where you can just have a decent conversation. Yeah. You know, a martini or a glass of wine and doesn't have to be a fancy meal. Just, you know, someplace where you can talk and not have to yell and spend a little time together. Yeah. But... You're more into movies than me. True. You know, I, if there's a good movie to see, I don't mind going to a movie, but I choose my movies carefully. The, the bad news about movies is that you, you can't really talk. You're just sitting there together. Yeah. And that's still nice, but it's, you know, communication's nice too. Be able to visit and chat about things. Sometimes there's unique things in Cleveland that, where you can spend time together and still talk. You know, oh, down yeah. on the water, they'll have something downtown or some kind of food festival or something. But yeah. the weather's not it. Those are kind of weather dependent. And right. We're fair weather people, so. Man, that's for sure. Well, it's cloudy. Guess we're staying in. No, <laughs> which is half the year in Cleveland. It's over 85. Can't go to that. <laughs> <laughs> so true. So we'll just stay home and eat popcorn and watch movies here. No, but there, there, there's the restaurant we really like down on the canal where you can yep. sit outside and just listen to the water and have a couple drinks. And, and that ginormous pretzel. Oh, I was thinking of the one uh, down in Valley View. Oh, yeah, yeah. On the oh, canal. Yeah, that was But yeah, the too. one downtown. Yep. On, on the wharf. Yeah, they have a hot pretzel this size size of a dinner plate it's it's ridiculous you gotta come home and go to bed after that one though because you're in a carb <laughs> coma <laughs> i need a nap but so speaking of maintenance one thing that we've learned over the years too is that if if we say something or if we're hurt by something the other person said it's better to just get it out address it right away get it out in the open because we're not mind readers so if something's really eating at us just Get it out there and talk about it. I find that that's yeah, because neither one of us ever means to hurt each other. No. So if you hold on to it, then things just build and wind up being a whole lot of hurt feelings, and that's not good. So. And our imagination is usually worse than reality. Like we always imagine For sure. the worst. Yeah. So, so there you go. Regular maintenance is a good thing. Yep. Cool. All right, number seven, it's rewarding. So home, home ownership is totally rewarding, I think. You've got a place of your own. You can basically do what you want with it uh, as far as decorating and, you know, additions if, if the city will allow you to make them, things like that. Yeah, and you have a sense of accomplishment that comes with having a home and taking care of it yeah absolutely and, you know a lot of these principles apply to you know having an apartment too but there's just something about home ownership it seems like you know you own the place and so you've got that 
pride of ownership. Of course, along with that comes all these other <laughs> responsibilities that you have to deal with. But plus, it's, it's a, a it's an investment. Yeah, I mean, it's probably most people's biggest investment. Yeah, and if you don't continual continuously refinance, you know, you'll have a nice savings if you eventually pay it off. <laughs> yep. So I can't refinance too much. <laughs> no. <clears throat> no. So being married has a lot of benefits too. I mean, sing being single has its benefits. Being married has its benefits. But I certainly enjoy being married. Me too. Whew. Glad you said that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we get to do things together, which is pretty awesome. Travel together, spend time together. So teamwork. It's pretty awesome. Teamwork's necessary. Yeah. Especially when raising children. Definitely. Yeah. So that leads us to number eight. So number eight, it doesn't have to be expensive to be appealing. And uh, I, I've appraised so many different kinds of homes over the years. I mean, from like tiny little 500 square foot cottages to, you know, a big 10,000 square foot mega mansion. And I've met happy people in both. So it's really not about the size of the home. I and mean, you can be happy or sad in a big home or a small home. But I think it's really about what people focus on, not, not the home that they have. If they have a great big home, nothing wrong with that or small home. But uh, not really about the money. And the same is true with marriage. Money doesn't uh, make a person attractive, at least I don't think. No, sometimes just the opposite. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just being kind and loving and caring to one another. And that goes with any relationship, not just marriage, but just any relationship. And those qualities, they're all free. So you, like you can never be too loving or too caring. So it's pretty awesome. Now money can make life a little bit easier, to be sure. No question about that. Probably one of the number one things that people fight about is money. So, yes, true. But, um, but if our focus is right, you know, can't buy long-term happiness. All right. Number nine. So number nine is curb appeal is great, but what's on the inside is more important. And from an appraisal standpoint, I shouldn't, but I kind of begin to judge a home before I've even gone in, I pull up and I'm thinking if it looks like it hasn't been maintained well on the outside, I start thinking, oh boy, the inside's gonna be bad. I think that's a natural opinion. Yeah, you know, a lot of times it's, it's, it's accurate, but, but not always, you know, I have been in some homes where I pulled up, I'm like, eh, it's okay. And I get on the inside and oh man, it is gorgeous. Like they've remodeled it. Or even if they haven't remodeled it, it's just they've they've maintained it so well and the quality of construction is so excellent uh, with all, all sorts of beautiful details. So you can't always you know, judge something by the exterior when it comes to houses. That's true. Yeah, same is true with the marriage. Yeah, we definitely break down on the outside. Well, on the inside too, physically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a vicious process. Yeah, aging is, it's tough, but and no one's immune to it. So like some people age really well. And then I've, some, I've seen some people that I would think you know, 20 years older than, than us and they're the same age. I'm like, oh man, but they're super nice people. Yeah. So that's, that's really what counts. But uh, aging is a, a brutal thing, but it's it's what's on the inside that's most important. And with age comes some pretty awesome things like ex life experience, and you you just can't get that automatically. That just comes with time. So I feel like the older we get, even though we don't look as good as we used to. Well, I'll speak for myself. You look good. I I, I have the face for podcasting. So. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, 
but uh, yeah, I mean, the, the older we get, we have life experience, and that's, that's a beautiful thing. There's something to that. It, it is kind of funny that our eyesight gets worse in our 40s. You know, like, like I won't recognize some wrinkles, and I put my glasses on. I'm like, oh, where'd those come from? <laughs> so, so maybe it's like a blessing in disguise that our eyesight goes at some point. Yeah, I, d I don't know. Eyesight going at any time isn't necessarily good. I mean, well, no. you try putting on makeup when you can't see. and You have glasses hanging on one eye so you can do the other eye. Yeah, I always have a problem with that. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't even think about makeup. Good point. That's why I have that magnification mirror, like that 10 time magnification. Oh, but man. then it's really scary looking in the mirror because every wrinkle's like 10 times magnified and, you know. That thing's brutal. Men have it easy. I, I did check out that mirror once and I thought there was like a series of volcanoes on my nose. <laughs> it was ridiculous. Yeah. I stay away from that thing. Yeah. Hey, ignorance is bliss. <laughs> All right, moving on to number 10. When things go wrong, a little humor can help. So I've always said you can you can laugh or you can cry, so you might as well just laugh. That means we've laughed a lot this past year. <laughs> Man, ain't that the truth? Yeah, it's some years are great and other years just things happen, but Whew. and you and you just can't for, foresee it. It just happens. Like the uh the tree that fell on our shed. I mean that shed was We've been here 19 years, so the shed was 19 years old, but I mean, it needed a new roof, so we got a whole new shed, but. That was a blessing in disguise. Yeah, but it was tragic. Yeah. Or the, the tree that just a short time later, you know, I just bought that new Subaru and like it was two weeks old. And when I mean new, I mean like it was a brand, it's a brand new car, not just like. A, a new older car so i hadn't had a scratch on it yet oh no yeah i barely had the sticker off the window and then the, the tree fell on it that was amazing though yeah yeah no, just a few scratches that was it i couldn't believe it i mean a new car always has to get the first scratch so yeah it but... just saved me the burden of having to park at the far end of the parking lot now i can just park anywhere it doesn't matter Go ahead, ding it up, people. Because you couldn't even see the car under no, that tree. That was crazy. And I thought it was smashed to smithereens. I did too. And and at first I, I came outside, I was like, no, no, no. But then it's like, you know, who cares? You know, it's just material stuff. You yeah, at least it wasn't it. a person. Yep, exactly. Exactly. It's funny because I was up in the middle of the night that night and I saw the tree down. And it didn't occur to me that, oh, your car's under it. Because it looked like it was more towards the house. And I could see that the house was okay. It was so funny because I heard your alarm go off that morning. And I said, uh, you know, the tree in the front yard fell on the driveway. And the first thing, you said, my car! And flew out of bed. Yeah, I do remember that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I wasn't laughing at that particular moment. No. But, but we are <laughs> laughing now. But <laughs> uh, some things aren't aren't funny, you know. And some things are probably shouldn't be laughing at. But but in the grand scheme of things, that wasn't really a big deal. No. And then Braden flooded the bathroom a couple months ago. Oh, yeah. Forgot about that. Yeah. No big deal. Except for the mold in the basement from all that water. <laughs> no, there's no mold. Well, at least none that I can remember. Okay, nope. floor's clean. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> so if you got to laugh or you got to cry, you might as well just laugh. It makes things a little more palatable. And if you look at the big picture stuff, you know, in the big picture, most things aren't a big deal. If you're, if you survive it, you know, learn some lessons. Yeah, I mean, it is what it is. Nobody's hurt. Everything's fixable. That's it. And it is what it is. Oh, that's an, a favorite appraisal saying too. 
it, or appraiser saying, it is what it is. That's what the market value is. I'm going to leave it at that. So when it comes to laughing and crying in marriage, eh, all marriages have ups and downs and they just life throws stuff at you. A lot of times it's, it's a health issue or some other thing, but you don't make light of it. But I do think it's helpful to you know, have a good sense of humor about things. Yeah, at the time you may not be laughing at it, but looking back, you may find the humor in a situation. You may not. It may be truly a tragic situation, but you get through it. Yeah. You know, you don't throw in the towel. Nope. Necessarily. You just push through. Yeah. And... Things get better. A lot of the things we just talked about in this podcast, you know, we're laughing at them now, but at the time they may have been a little more scary, but. Yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, you know, every couple goes through their ups and downs. You know, we're not going to say it's all sunshine and roses, but. What? No, <laughs> no, you're right. But it's all good at the end of the day. It's like owning a home. There's pluses and minuses, but more pluses, many more pluses, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's a wrap. Well, thanks for being on the show. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. Will you come back another day? I sure will. We'll talk about something other than marriage. Sounds good. All right. And uh, thanks for putting up with our uh, sappy little show today, listening to our <laughs> personal experiences. But I hope you enjoyed it. And I, I hope you can see where home ownership really is a lot like marriage. So that's the end of season one for our show. But I hope you will stay tuned in January. We have a lot of new shows that we're, we're working on, and it should be a fun time. And I know a lot of people have uh, time off that they're taking in the next couple of weeks. So uh, Heather and I hope that you all enjoy your friends and family and enjoy the time off. Have a great one. Bye-bye. Bye. If you're in Northeast Ohio, and you're looking for a friendly and upbeat residential real estate appraiser, give me a call. I would love to help you. You can find me at clevelandappraisalblog.com. And if you're not in Northeast Ohio, go to findmyappraiser.com. They have the best appraisers. <laughs> <laughs>